Convincing your partner to give up the life they love for a new start is no easy matter, especially if it's on the other side of the world. But when your dream is based on a distant memory, would you be willing to risk your whole future for it? If you're desperate to return to the place you love... I almost felt that my business with Australia wasn't finished yet. ...while the dream seems out of your reach... It makes me a little bit nervous to think whether we can afford to live here at all. And leaving your family behind is unbearable. I can rule the nose. I would miss them more than I could ever see. Would you be able to give up everything for a new life down under? With its 30,000 miles of coastline and sunny climate, life in Australia has long been a favourite destination for Brits dreaming of a new life abroad. But when around 10,000 return home each year with their dreams in ruins, sometimes a life down under isn't all it's cracked up to be. Over the next seven days, the Afanasiyevs will get to experience the reality of living down under. At the end of it, they'll have to face a life-changing decision, whether to stay in the UK or to move to Australia. They'll be travelling to Sydney. Having been there before, they're familiar with the journey. And what a journey it is. 10,000 miles and 24 hours in the air. Landing in the early hours has brought home just how far they've come. The trip how? over was quite long. <laughs> yeah, but considering no, but how fun. far it was, it wasn't bad, was it? It was a lot were, better than I thought it was going to be. These guys the were really were good. We were really good. You were. From here, it's a short journey to their rental property, but a long way from home in Newcastle. In the UK, the Afanasievs live in this three-bedroom semi. There's Louise, Tosh and their two boys, Reuben, who's four, and two-year-old Ike. Both lived the single life in Australia in their early 20s. I lived in Melbourne for a couple of years when I was quite a bit younger, this is uh, 10 years ago. I was there in the early 90s when I was 20. Uh, but life was very different for me then. I was single, I worked as a baker, which meant I worked through the night. I had a really great time. I went with a friend who is Australian. She was from Sydney. What I saw was that there was the potential for a really fantastic lifestyle. When I left, but I didn't feel, oh, I could live here and I want to go, I can't wait to go back. I didn't feel that. I almost felt like coming away that my business with Australia wasn't finished yet. Several years later, they're now happily married with a young family, a lovely home and stable jobs. But for at least one of them, the idea of life down under is still very much alive. The kids came into our lives and, uh, and I, I suddenly wanted to share what I feel about that place with them and I wanted to show them, uh, you know, a, a different life. But Tosh knows Louise doesn't share his dream and needs to be convinced it's the right move. Louise has got very mixed feelings about the, the move. It's not an outright no by any means. If it was, there wouldn't, there wouldn't be a discussion. Uh, it all comes down to whether she wants to give up what we've got here in order to achieve a how much better life. For Louise, though, it's not a straightforward decision. They'll be risking everything they've worked so hard to achieve. If we move there, we're, we're, we're leaving behind family and friends, we're yeah. taking Reuben out of a fantastic school and a lovely house that, in a lovely neighbourhood. And Tosh has got a fantastic job here as well. It's leaving that behind, I think. That's, that's the big thing. And it's not just the lifestyle they'd be leaving behind. They'd be making the tough decision to say goodbye to Louise's parents. We live ten minutes from my parents who help us a great deal with the children with childcare and you know even if it's just for an hour or picking yeah. up from school and dropping off. It's a, a big big part of this decision. I, I feel that it's it's probably the deciding factor really when it comes down to it. Yeah basically leaving them behind would be very very hard. If we decide to go
With stunning scenery and a buzzing lifestyle, Tosh and Louise want to find out if Sydney could be for them. They both visited the city in the past, so how will the modern day version compare with what they remember? They'll be staying in the beach town of Avalon, north of central Sydney. By the time they reach their base, they're eager to see what Australia has to offer. Wow. Wow. Oh, Look at wow. this. This is beautiful. This oh, is just right right for Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, we've got big back on. Look at that. You can see the sea. This three-bedroom house is right next to the beach, with views to die for. Perfect, like, sort of family oh, entertainment. I love the idea of coming out and sitting out here for 20 minutes with a coffee before going to work. You know what I mean? You wouldn't even feel like you're going to work. It's amazing. Do they have squatters' rights here? <laughs> but Louise is already having doubts about whether they can afford this move. I've got very mixed emotions about the week ahead because we hear so many conflicting things about, you know, how it's so expensive here now and, you know, it's not what it was sort of five years ago. It's not so black and white. Louise and Tosh have set their hearts on a typical Aussie home. Open plan and close to the sea. But with Sydney's property prices being amongst the highest in the world, will they be able to afford the home they want? Back in the UK, the Afanasievs live in a three-bedroom semi which they bought in 2010. They're not short of a few ideas when it comes to their dream house in Australia. My ideal house would be very open plan. We'd have to have a minimum of three bedrooms. Indoor, outdoor area. It's the usual cliches. Nice pool. Not much really. What we don't want to do is take a step back from where we are now. It's got to be as good as or better than, than what we have already. They could have a budget of around £300,000. However, house prices in Sydney average nearly £400,000, double what they were 10 years ago when Tosh and Louise were last here. Will they be able to afford their dream house? Today, we're going to give them a taste of Sydney's housing market. We'll show them three different properties based around their budget and what they want from a home. Only after they've seen each one will we reveal to Louise and Tosh just how much they cost. The first property is close to their base in Avalon, but on the high street. Set right amongst the shops and cafes and with popular beaches nearby, it should give Tosh and Louise the cosmopolitan lifestyle thereafter. This two-bedroom flat should be a clue to just how expensive Sydney is. The location's good. Yeah, the location's very good. Nice and central, close to cafes. It's got a balcony. Obviously, there won't be a garden, but flats obviously says something about the affordability, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it does. And a flat generally means one thing, stairs. I've got to go up another flight, Reuben. Oh, it's outside. Yeah. I wonder what number we'll be at. And in this case, lots of them. Hopefully, it will be worth the effort. Come on, here we go. Oh, look, there's the bathroom. Like the nice big shower. Yeah. It's nice see. and bright, isn't it? Should we have a look? It's quite small. It is. It's nice, good sized balcony. Oh, I like the fact that it's got the open top. Yeah, yeah, I really like That's that. That's nice, isn't it? It's like downstairs, it would be quite a clean yeah. close, but it's you nice. You can get loads of light. And yeah. It's got a, I love the view, I really yeah. do. I mean, it's great because when we can't afford to eat out, we can watch other people doing it and stuff. <laughs> I'm not sure that's something to look forward to, Tosh. Perhaps it's time to go in and look at the bedrooms. Yeah, this is nice. Yeah, it's got a balcony as well. That's yeah. good. I think mean, it's lovely. It is, but you know, there is the thing that. It's only got two bedrooms, which is fine for us, but we are expecting my parents to come and visit. Yeah, no. I, I, so it, we would need... It wouldn't be a permanent place, yeah. really, uh, but it would be the kind of landing pad just, yeah. to, just to get settled. It's like one of the things, we need to see how much something like this goes for. It might be this is kind of it for us, and if that, if that is the case, then, you know, mm. that's obviously part of the decision. Yeah. Louise and Tosh may only see this flat as a stepping stone to something bigger, but they don't know the actual price yet. This property only has two bedrooms and no garden for the children. Time to find out the price. It's not what I 
envisage sort of us living in in Australia and I understand what you're saying about it being a long landing pad and stuff but I don't also want to be moving around all the time. Wow, 400,000 pounds. Mm. Yes, that's, mm. yeah, that's quite... That's a lot. This flat is well over their £300,000 budget and it's not even somewhere they'd want to live. Louise is already having grave doubts. I'm a little bit nervous now to look at the other properties because, you know, from the size of this and everything, I know it's a central location, but it makes me a little bit nervous to think that that's what we're sort of starting off on and whether we can afford to live here at all. It's not a good start. Tosh's dream of Australia is already looking precarious. He really needs the next place to make a better impression on Louise. The second property is in the neighbourhood of Bilgola. It's a quiet leafy area and with beaches and parks nearby, it does mean it's more suitable for a young family. And the Afanasievs should get more house for their money, as Tosh is quick to spot. It looks like it's got amazing potential. It's, it looks quite big actually, and, uh, yeah. and I love the established trees and stuff. That's really good. This is more what I had in mind. Yeah, uh, the, the house looks amazing. Obviously, it is a bit of a project. Yeah, there's some work to do, isn't there? This three-bedroom house does need some work, but will it put them off? Wow, look at this entrance. This could be amazing, couldn't it? This could be really, really cool. I love this whole big glass up. thing. Wow. It seems Louise and Tosh can see the potential. Look at the view out there, Lou. That is I know. amazing. It's priceless, the, isn't it? The balcony is huge. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can see the boats. You can see the boats from up here. However, Louise has one big problem. Considering there's so much glass and window, I find it quite dark. I know what you're saying, but I think on a really hot day to have all this glass and if you were sat, if you couldn't sit cool. anywhere without the sun streaming in on you, you know what I mean, it yeah. might be a bit oppressive, so I think you're probably quite grateful of that. Good point, Tosh. Unfortunately, the bedrooms are not helping win his case. The bedrooms, I just think it's too dark. It's very couldn't dark, live anywhere this dark. It's very dark. And this is another bedroom, I would say. It's quite damp as well, I think, isn't it? Yeah, it smells um, good. What's that going on It's here? like all mm. on the walls as well. Yeah. And that balcony seems to have eroded. away. It would be cost a fortune to put it right. Mom, to, put, to make it safe for the boys to be living in, mm. it would cost a fortune. Well, all the stairs, all the railing would have to change before. And then know. there's like no garden, is there? I don't think so. This house may be large and spacious, but it does need plenty of work. Will that mean it comes at an affordable price? Or is a flat all they can get in their budget? It's time to find out the price. I'm intrigued. I, I get a feeling it's one of those ones where it's a bargain because of where it is and things and, and because it it's a doer upper but i get the feeling that it's not going to be cheap enough for us right yeah yeah right sure. mm. four hundred and fifty thousand pounds that's i'm quite surprised at that because what it, low or higher i thought it would be higher i thought yeah but then you've got to add on the hundred thousand pounds for renovation so say so yeah. five five fifty yeah. But then obviously they, they might take offers, you know. They might do because of the state of it. A, they might be keen to shift it. So you could you could end up paying four hundred and fifty thousand pounds for it, and then it would be. Then it's looking different, isn't yeah. it? I mean, especially when you compare it to four hundred for the flat. For the flat, exactly. Then it's then it's a different story. Altogether. You get a lot of house. I think it's quite a good price. Actually, yeah, I do. For what you're getting. Yeah, I'm quite surprised. Mm. It's good. I'm not convinced by their maths. Even if they could get £100,000 knocked off the price of this property, it would still be over their budget of £300,000. Are Tosh and Louise being realistic about what they can afford? Maybe the third property will make things clearer. Like the first, it's in Avalon, but this time in a quieter residential part. It's architect designed with three bedrooms, gardens and a pool. Could this be the dream house Louise is after? Wow, this looks nice, doesn't it? Ooh. Mm. Garden, nice garden. It's very nice. Mm, I like it. Oh, wow, this is nice, this isn't is it? Really nice. This is lovely. This is really beautiful. Look yeah, it's lovely. This is kind of what you think about, isn't it? This, that kind, yeah, this kind of open this plan kind of thing. Of loads of light. It's lovely, lovely and open. You couldn't get a better location, really, for me. You can see that. You can see water. There's some impression. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. Well, so far, so good with this house. They're quite small, but then 
the they're rest of them. They're not massive, but then, but then I, don't I care. suppose the emphasis is not on this is good. sitting in your room, do you know what I mean? It's about this is good, isn't it? Open. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, that's really good. That's really yeah. handy, actually. Yeah. So you can have two or one. Very good. Louise seems prepared to overlook the smallish bedrooms. All that's left is the back garden. Look at that. This is more us. It's more family. It's got your outside area, both front and back. This has got, hasn't it? You know, and especially with two young boys, that's what you need. You don't want to be setting up slides and stuff on balconies. And... So yeah, this. I think practically for what we need now, this ticks all the boxes. It's lovely. I love it. <laughs> I'm scared to know how much it's going to be. It's probably going to be way out of our reach. It's like too perfect, isn't it? This house has got both Louise and Tosh excited, but they still don't know the price. It has everything they want from Australian living, but will it be out of their reach? This is going to be a jump from the last one, because the last one had a lot of work to be done. Um, and this is going to be, a, I reckon, a big jump from that. Let's find out. Mmm. For what you yeah, get. Buy it. For what you get. <laughs> I mean, that really. I I thought it was going to be a lot more, but wow, that's that was, that's, that's very reasonable for, with the pool and. <laughs> It might be a reasonable price for this house, but it's nearly £200,000 over their budget. Are Tosh and Louise letting their excitement overtake the reality of what they can afford? So, the first property was only something Tosh or Louise would consider as a stepping stone. The second was too dark and needed too much work. The last house was everything they hoped for, but was well above their budget. So, what's the verdict? Can they really see themselves giving up their home in Newcastle? OK, we've seen our three properties today. It's been really interesting, and I think it's time to vote. Australia! Australia! <laughs> It's great news for Tosh. He's one step closer to his Australian dream. When we came out of the first apartment this morning, I didn't think I was going to be voting Australia at this point in time. I thought that it was going to be out of our reach. In the UK, if we looked at a house in that price range, we wouldn't be able to afford it. So no. also this, this does hinge on, on what our earning power is here. Yeah. Everything now rides on the next few days. Can Tosh earn enough to make Australia a reality, or will the move remain a pipe dream? Finding out the cost of property in modern-day Sydney was a real eye-opening experience for the whole family. Even so, a vote for Oz has left Tosh feeling optimistic about the move. Now the pressure's firmly on his shoulders to find a job that pays a lot more than his current salary if they're to afford the house they want. Back in the UK, Tosh works as a computer software developer earning around £40,000 a year. We've arranged for him to spend a day with the software design company in the centre of Sydney. Tosh is aware the entire move is riding on what he finds out today. Finding the right job is, is key for this move. Back home, we've got, a, we've got a really good life. We've got a lovely house, I've got a good job. So we'd have to see quite a big improvement um, by moving here. Louise works part-time in a shop, but will be at home in Australia until the children settle in. She wants to know that schools here are as good as those back home. While Ike is with a childminder, she and Ruben are off to check out a local preschool. Go on, in you go, in you go. Come on. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hey guys. This is Ruben. Louise, nice to meet you. Hey Ruben, is it? Yeah. Hello, you can come in and have a little look around with all the kids if you like. I'll show you around look. as well, hey? Come on in. So how many children do you have? We have 29 a day. Yeah. So today, and are they here all day? Yep, yeah, from 9 till 3. While Louise carries on with her fact-finding, Tosh has arrived in the city and is meeting with company director Michael Lamb. Hi, Tosh. Nice you. to meet you. Nice. Welcome. Welcome to Sydney. Thank you. Come on through. We'll go just to the back room, uh, meet some of our team members, and uh, work, uh, show you uh, what we do around here. So this way. 
The company develop a wide range of software, so it should be a great chance for Tosh to find out about the possibility of work in Sydney. Hi, guys. Hi, uh, good day. Mags, this is Tosh. Mags. Mags is the project manager on Hubler. This is one of our project teams. We've got other project teams, sure. but it's a project that we're looking to launch fairly soon. Um, so uh, we've got uh, these guys working on it hard, pushing, pushing away. So, sure. Well, d if you want to sit down, we can sure. um, have a glass of water, and yes. uh, you can ask me some questions you might have. Brilliant. Okay. okay. At the school, Louise is also getting to the important questions. Being able to get Ruben and Ike into a decent school is crucial to any move. So what are the fees? At $42 a day. Right. So if you're coming for the three days, it's per day. Yeah. So. And is there a waiting list? There sure is. Yeah. Um, it's quite a high demand at the moment. Yeah. Um, quite a long waiting list here. So. And um, we have a lot of siblings that are here, so mm -hmm. they often uh, sort of get first priority because yeah. the family's already in here. So, because that, that would be my issue of, you know, if we suddenly arrived, yep. then we'd kind of have to sort of maybe put his name down prior to us coming, wouldn't we? And It would maybe help if you knew friends in the area or something like yeah. that, and they could talk to us. And yeah. you, we've even had a few people organise it from overseas. Right. Just calling and just getting their name yeah. out the yeah. door and saying, OK, we're going to be there June. Can we come in and see you? Will there be a spot? The problems of getting into a good school are just like those in the UK. However, the fees for schooling until the boys are six will mean more money pressures. Back in the city, it's all down to Tosh's work potential. Did you see someone like me fitting into this company and uh, being a part of it? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, your your experience, um, I think, in the Australian marketplace would would fit, um, whether it's with our company or somewhere else. I mean, um, your experience would be probably relevant to some of the big companies like the banks. The banks, mm -hmm. I know, are looking for a lot of, um, of uh, staff uh, in the development database, and, and, and they've got fairly large IT projects. So employability um, shouldn't be an issue if Brilliant. you were to come down to Australia. Brilliant. <laughs> That's promising news. And over at the school, Louise is getting into the idea of Aussie education. Oh, it's really lovely. I'm really impressed. It's a, it's a lovely, lovely place. And the children just seem really happy, which is the main, the te yeah. you know, that says everything, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, it's we lovely. really just try to create a happy and warm environment, mm. you know, where the kids feel safe and yeah. can learn and have fun. I mean, they don't want much. They just want to have fun. Exactly. And people their own age yeah. and we're here to guide them through all of that and have fun with them. Tosh meanwhile has reached the most important question. So with my sort of skills and experience is there a, a rough, you know, sort of band that you could give me for like, working in Sydney how much I could expect to earn? Yeah um, I think you know looking at your CV I'd say probably um, 80 to 90 grand um, oh, okay. in annual salary um, and um, depending on the type of project uh, you know it could be slightly more with bonuses etc. Fantastic. That's nearly 60,000 pounds, 20,000 more than he earns in the UK. It's ideal news. Thanks very much Thanks for coming time, in. Michael. Thanks yep. very much. And uh, best of luck with things. Brilliant. Thanks Cheers. very much. Bye. So how will Tosh vote on work in Australia versus his job in the UK? I've met an employer today. Um, I've, I've had a little insight into how they work here in Australia in my industry. And now it's time to vote. Australia! It seems to me that I could earn quite well here. In terms of actually seeing how far it'll take us with the cost of living here, that's, we've yet to have a look at that. Whether it's going to support us in the way that we would like to live and whether that, that will mean the improvement on our lifestyle in the UK that we would need to see to, to come over here, um, we've still got to, got to work out. Hi, uh, how, how, you it, how did it go? Yeah, really good. When Tosh and Louise meet up later, they're keen to find out the others' news. That was kindy. The kindy, the kind of the kindy was great. Was it it's good? lovely. Yeah, Ruben loved it. He was just interacting with everybody. Yeah, it was really nice. Really nice. Oh, it's brilliant! I'm glad. So, how did work go? Work was really good. He was quite impressed with the CV, so they had the right balance of skills Excellent. for that job. Mm -hmm. I also asked him in Sydney, you know, what kind of uh, salary I could expect. Mm -hmm. 
and he said that with my skills and experience, I'd be looking between eighty and ninety thousand a year to oh, start. Brilliant. So it's you know yeah. what, what we found yeah. when we were mm-hmm. looking around. Yeah. Um, so that Excellent. was really encouraging. Yeah, um, that is good. Yeah. yeah. So we might be able to afford that house after all. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Tosh's earning potential is very welcome news and could open doors to them affording their dream home. But are the family thinking with their hearts rather than their heads? Perhaps it's time for them to take a reality check. Firstly, they need to know how much their UK home is worth. So we sent round two estate agents to give us their opinion. They bought it in 2010 for £159,000 and have spent a lot of time modernising it. Do you find out what's going to happen? Yes. It looks like it's been refurbished recently. There's a new oven and hob, a modern heating system, stainless steel sink, dishwasher. It's a good sized space. Look, there's your oh, old work. work, Ruben. <laughs> Third bedroom, Ike's room. Perfectly chaotic, ideal for a little boy. <laughs> nice large open plan, dining room and lounge. Really nice. Really, really nice. nice. Right. Thank you. Oh no, the not toilet. the toilet. Don't show people the toilet. <laughs> Great size second bedroom and a very lucky boy with all these toys. Mm-hmm. Nice and bright. Doesn't really meet the same standard as the rest of the house, but definitely has potential. Nice. <laughs> we haven't got round to that room yet. A really pleasant three bedroom semi. I'd be looking to put the property on the market at 189,950. <laughs> if they're looking for a quicker sale, probably closer to 175. Wow, well, that's. It's a fantastic little family home. If I was to market the house, I'd market it at £185,000 um, and for a quick sale, £179,950. Wow. wow. That's not bad, is it? Yeah. Oh, we live in England. Oh, sweetheart. We do. We do. We do. <laughs> you miss your house? Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Was it, do you just get a little bit homesicksy in your house on the TV? Yeah. Don't worry, Ruben. Oh, poor Reuben. He might be upset by seeing his house and toys, but Mum and Dad are quite happy with what they've heard, though they're not getting carried away. You know, the two, two things that concern me are the... Obviously, you, you know, it's all very well getting a house valued. <laughs> But you've still got to sell it, and what you actually sell it for may not be yeah. what the estate agent says. But still, you know, it's nice to hear. Um, and the other thing is obviously the exchange rate not being mm. what it was. Uh, that lump doesn't necessarily go as far over here as it, as it might do over there. So yeah. there's that to think about too. With Tosh's money worries, they need to see how far their finances will go. So we prepared a breakdown of their living costs in Australia to see if emigrating really is possible. Okay, so now we need to see how much the property is going to cost us. Oh, right, so we've got, that was the flat, which we pretty much yeah. um, weren't that. Well, your mortgage, monthly repayments. We, we couldn't would, make that payment. We couldn't we, pay. We'd be paying $3,730. That, that, that is what I earn at the moment, per month, in the UK after yeah. tax. Yeah, yeah. So we couldn't do yeah. that. And that's the cheapest of the three, even though it's not the one we'd really go for. So, mm. yeah, and that one, the one that we really loved, is I mean, it's far more than we pull in a month. We couldn't buy any of Anything. those kind of three yeah. properties, we mm. just couldn't. That's a bit rubbish, isn't it? Yeah, if we were to buy, it wouldn't be any of those three. No, on their current income, this move is a non starter. How do things add up based on Tosh's Australian salary? So bringing in all our other sort of lifestyle costs and now what we think we might be able to earn here, we can see whether or not we can Let's actually do look. it. Let's have a look, see if it gets any brighter. Right, so. Okay. Times 12. Four 
40. So that means we are 3,712 pounds off, worse, worse off, off a year here. here. So the question is, But that's you with the massive 3,735 pound mortgage. Mm -hmm. That's with the well, dream that's house. That's the that's, pool and the yeah, exactly. pit water view, you know. Yeah. That's that's not what we'd be jumping into. So yeah. So it is very doable. I think it's doable. You know, it, it's not kind of it's not a case of sell your house and move into a mansion, but but it is a case of mm. sell your house where we live and move into a house here. It's more positive than oh, I thought it was going to be. I'm, I'm really quite encouraged mm. actually. I was expecting a much more grim picture, especially when I saw this. This yeah. figure here, this repayment. Yeah. The Afanasievs think they could make this move, but only if they buy a house much smaller than the one they've fallen for. Does it mean the move is off, or would they consider giving up the dream home? We've done the reality check, we've found out some interesting facts and figures, and now it's time to vote. Australia. Australia! Brilliant. Probably we're going to be a little bit worse off. We're not going to be as worse off as I thought, and I think what you get in surroundings and the environment makes up for that loss of money. The things you have to buy are more expensive, and the things you get for free are just much better, I think. Yeah. Even though their ideal house seems out of reach and finances look like they'd be stretched, Tosh and Louise have still voted for Australia. Despite having to go to Plan B on property, Louise's enthusiasm for Australia is music to Tosh's ears. But what's underpinning all their hopes is a better quality of life for the family. And if money is going to be tight, it's crucial they find out if the Aussie lifestyle's for them. Louise and Tosh both spent time in Australia before they met, but they were living very different lifestyles. When I first went to Sydney, which was like 20 years ago, my impression was very different. I had a great time, but was quite happy to leave and go back to England, to London. I'm now 20 years older than I was. I'm married and I've got two young children. So what I'm looking for in a place is different to what I was looking for 20 years ago. 20 years ago, I was looking for clubs and bars and parties. And, and now I'm looking for sort of nice schools and you know, nice beaches and nice, nice surroundings, a nice family orientated place. So as parents, they need to see what Oz can offer for family days out. Today, they're heading to the world-famous Taronga Zoo. There should be plenty of chances to get close to the wildlife, one of Ruben's favourite things to do. We're going to go meet some lovely Australian animals. Have you got any favourites you'd like to see? Um, it's koalas and snakes. Koalas and snakes. Well, you know what? I'm pretty sure I can do something about that for you. Come through here. Come on. Come on, kids. Let's go and see the animals. What's that, eh? That is a kangaroo. Her name is Koba, and she's a western grey kangaroo. Oh, look, she's giving him a cuddle. Koba seems to be doing a great job of selling Australia to the children. And there's plenty of other animals to keep the boys happy. This is a diamond python. Okay. Now, before you come close, this snake, this snake will kill its prey, the food, through what we call constriction. Like a boa. Like a boa constrictor. So it squeezes. That's right, that's exactly right. Hey, you're pretty smart, aren't you? <laughs> I've got here a very special animal. What is it? Koala. A koala. You ready? Here we go. I can't, I can't Isn't she koalas. lovely? Koalas are really impressive. Aren't they? Well, I told you, you'd be able to see a koala. Hmm. Didn't I? Yeah. Oh. Are you pretty lucky? Pretty Definitely. Not cute. many people get to do this route. The boys seem happy. Even when the weather turns, Ike's enthusiasm isn't dampened. I'm giving up with Ike. I'm soaking. Do you want to keep him? <laughs> yeah, I think we've got a spare. Uh, so we're holding a cage out the back there, we can pop, pop into for the day. We'll feed him well. <laughs> Between the animals and the puddles, the day has given the Afanasievs just what they were looking for. As their trip to the zoo comes to an end, there's a break in the clouds, giving them a chance to spend a bit of time on an Aussie beach. 
So, after a packed family day out, how will they vote on the lifestyle? We've uh, been to the zoo today, for, uh, done our family activity, so now it's time to vote. Australia! Australia, Australia again? Just trying to keep you happy. No. <laughs> no, it was... Yeah, we had a great morning. The zoo was amazing. There's definitely more for families, I think. Yeah. That's another step towards Tosh's dream of Australia. However, there is one big issue that Louise has been putting to the back of her mind. I haven't forgotten all of that in the UK, you know. I haven't forgotten about not having my parents here, which, you know, is and still is the, the issue for me. Now it's the only issue. Whereas before it was the big issue, plus there was other things, but now it, that's the only thing. We've obviously got to th deal with that issue and think about leaving them behind and for the boys and for me. Sampling the lifestyle has shown the family what they can gain in Australia. They also know what they stand to lose. Everything now rests on their reaction of seeing messages from friends and family back home. For Louise, leaving loved ones has always been the toughest obstacle to moving. It hasn't really been something I've thought about this week because it is just a week out here. Um, but in, when I do stop to think about it, it I do get quite Especially now, knowing a bit, little bit more about how I feel about Australia. It's even more upsetting. <laughs> I haven't even put the DVD on yet and I'm welling up. It could be an emotional experience, but Tosh and Louise want to watch it together with the children. Hello, Louise. Tosh and the boys, Ike and Ruben. Lou's my soulmate, actually. We go back to school days. I miss her terribly. She's just a lovely daughter. <laughs> we do have our moments, but... We get on very better now than we did when she was in her teens. Well, you know, I mean, one part of your heart drops, the other one thinks, uh, well, they know what they're doing. Um, even Newcastle feels like the other end of the world. And that's just a, a four-hour drive from where we live. It's going to be quite upsetting thinking that actually to go and see Tosh and Luke is going to be quite a big haul to get the five of us out there. I know you're in Australia now and you're trying to decide whether to stay or not or where you go, but the last thing I want is you to worry about what's going to happen to us. I would prefer you to think about your life. We have had our life and if you're happy and you think it's going to be a better life for the boys. You've got our blessing and we hope that you'll really enjoy it. We won't, we wouldn't stand in your way, you know that. We would miss you, but if you want to go. You go, it's your life, and we want you to do well. I'm behind you, absolutely behind you, but I have to say that I will miss you guys so much. Don't worry about me. Just do whatever you want to do. Follow your instincts as you always have. And you've pretty well always been right. So carry on. I can Ruben knows I would miss them more than I could ever see. But they know I'm always here. I don't want them not to decide to go because of me. I would like you to make your mind up what you want to do and know that Grandma's here for you always. <sighs> Taking them away from their grandparents is probably is the biggest thing. Um, that's kind of, re I've sort of thought about a lot recently. It's their world, you know, the boys are their world and they see them all the time. As I think am I being selfish just taking them away when you know, maybe I am, I don't know, maybe, you know. I think, um, yeah, I mean, what I wouldn't want to do is push Louise into a decision that, that was too painful, you know, to make and, and 
you know, I can, I can perfectly understand why someone might see that uh, living somewhere else would be better for them, but still X decide not to because of X not wanting to leave people who are close to them. I can understand that happening. Seeing the pain of leaving loved ones behind is always difficult, especially for children. But if the Afanasievs are going to make the move, they have to be certain that a new life will be worth the heartache. It's an emotional end to the week, and it's given Tosh and Louise a lot to think about. Louise has always had more doubts than me about coming here. Her reaction to seeing friends and family back home, uh, uh, it's, it wasn't a surprise at all. It made me feel really emotional. Um, and it was my reality check, because that's always been the big thing that, you know, that's made me very sort of against the decision. Whether that watching those messages will actually pull her back the other way, I don't know. And if that's the case, then that's the case. I wouldn't want to force that, you know, if that is the case, I wouldn't want to force it anyway, because we wouldn't be happy here then. When it comes to the final vote with Louise, I, I don't know, who knows? The Afanasievs have had a life-changing week that's given them a full taste of life in Australia. From house and job hunting to family days out and kids schools. But now it's time to make the final vote. Will they go for a future in Australia or has the upset of seeing loved ones made leaving the UK unthinkable? So we've come to the end of our fantastic week here in Australia. We've seen some fantastic houses, some great sights, some great beaches. We've had a great time. And now it's time for the final vote. Australia! Australia. Oh, you voted as well! Fantastic! <laughs> Why did you vote Australia? <laughs> okay. Overall, I, I think I just think the feel. It feels like a better place for us to live. I think it's more geared for the way we want to live. Uh, I think we could have a better life here. Yeah, I agree. It's been a real surprise. On the plane here, I didn't think that I would be voting now. That I'd be voting Australia. I thought I would be voting UK. I, I thought you might do a bit of a middle of the road thing. No, I'm so far the other way. Brilliant, brilliant. I don't do anything by heart. No, no, it's true. It's true. <laughs> Ever. After confronting the emotional and financial costs, Louise has been won over by Tosh's dream of a new life down under. They know leaving home will mean making sacrifices, but with the future in mind, they're ready to face them together. It's the TV equivalent of a giant skip where celebrities dump their pet hates. New host Frank Skinner with the return of Room 101 tonight at 8.30. Next on BBC One, it's Homes Under the Hammer. Convincing your partner to give up the life they love for a new start is no easy matter especially if it's on the other side of the world. But when your dream is based on a distant memory, would you be willing to risk your whole future for it? If you're desperate to return to the place you love... I almost felt that my business with Australia wasn't finished yet. But the dream seems out of your reach. It makes me a little bit nervous to think whether we can afford to live here at all. And leaving your family behind is unbearable. I can rule the nose. I would miss them more than I could ever see. Would you be able to give up everything for a new life down under? With its 30,000 miles of coastline and sunny climate, life in Australia has long been a favourite destination for Brits dreaming of a new life abroad. 
but when around 10,000 return home each year with their dreams in ruins, sometimes a life down under isn't all it's cracked up to be. Over the next seven days, the Afanasiyevs will get to experience the reality of living down under. At the end of it, they'll have to face a life-changing decision, whether to stay in the UK or to move to Australia. They'll be travelling to Sydney. Having been there before, they're familiar with the journey. And what a journey it is. 10,000 miles and 24 hours in the air. Landing in the early hours has brought home just how far they've come. The trip how? over was quite long. <laughs> yeah, but long, considering but how fun. far it was, it wasn't bad, was it? It was a lot were, better than I thought it was going to be. These guys the were really were good. We were really good. You were. From here, it's a short journey to their rental property, but a long way from home in Newcastle. In the UK, the Afanasievs live in this three-bedroom semi. There's Louise, Tosh and their two boys, Reuben, who's four, and two-year-old Ike. Both lived the single life in Australia in their early 20s. I lived in Melbourne for a couple of years when I was quite a bit younger, this is uh, 10 years ago. I was there in the early 90s when I was 20. Uh, but life was very different for me then. I was single, I worked as a baker, which meant I worked through the night. I had a really great time. I went with a friend who is Australian. She was from Sydney. What I saw was that there was the potential for a really fantastic lifestyle. When I left, well, I didn't feel, oh, I could live here and I want to go, I can't wait to go back. I didn't feel that. I almost felt like coming away that my business with Australia wasn't finished yet. Several years later, they're now happily married with a young family, a lovely home and stable jobs. But for at least one of them, the idea of life down under is still very much alive. The kids came into our lives and, uh, and uh, I, I suddenly wanted to share what I feel about that place with them and I wanted to show them uh, you know, a, a different life. But Tosh knows Louise doesn't share his dream and needs to be convinced it's the right move. Louise has got very mixed feelings about the, the move. It's not an outright no by any means. If it was, there wouldn't, there wouldn't be a discussion. Uh, it all comes down to whether she wants to give up what we've got here in order to achieve a how much better life. For Louise, though, it's not a straightforward decision. They'll be risking everything they've worked so hard to achieve. If we move there, we're, we're, we're leaving behind family and friends. We're, taken Ruben out of a fantastic school and a lovely house in a lovely neighbourhood. And Tosh has got a fantastic job here as well. It's leaving that behind, I think. That's, that's the big thing. And it's not just the lifestyle they'd be leaving behind. They'd be making the tough decision to say goodbye to